Hey, what's going on, guys? We're continuing on with the versus battles. Today, we have the Great Hammers versus the Great Axes. Now, both of these are very decent strength weapons that have received a bunch of buffs over the previous few patches to where their speeds are just a lot quicker now. So definitely a top tier strength option for both of these. But we're just going to have a bunch of different categories pit up against each other, trying to figure out which one is best for which scenario. As always, please do like and subscribe and do follow me on Twitch because I should be live by the time this video is out. But yeah, that out of the way, let's get into it. Starting off with the variety, we have the Great Axes here. Now there isn't really too much going on. You do have stuff for like strength, have something for dexterity. You do have stuff for differing movesets in the Crescent Moon Axe, in the Axe of Godric. Do you have something for a bleed in the Omen Killer Cleaver? Do have a piercing type option, something that has higher crit ratio as well. Now one thing this actually is definitely missing is elemental base options because the three, they actually cannot be infused. Only one of them actually has an elemental scaling in the Gargoyle's Black Act, which actually does get a Faith scaling, albeit it's just a D scaling, and it doesn't even get a unique Ash or it gets stuck with Warcry, so it definitely needs something in that regard. So overall, in terms of variety, I'd probably give it a B tier. As for the Great Hammers though, these ones are probably a lot better in terms of the variety. Once again, do you have stuff for like strength and dexterity? Do you have something where that does piercing damage and a differing moveset in the pickaxe? Something that actually does proc Scarlet Rot and can be infused. Do you have another bleed option that actually does give you health regen as well in the Great Stars? Do you have a bunch of decent options that do have elemental scalings, albeit all of them are just faith scaling. So if there's one thing that the Great Axes are missing, it's probably like a decent intelligence-based option. But overall, probably end up giving an A tier for the Great Hammers. Okay, now going over the movesets, once again, just going to talk about the basic and generic movesets that these weapon classes do get. It's not going to go over anything that's actually unique, but with the Great Axes themselves, they just get a bunch of overhead slams pretty much throughout this entire moveset. Light attack combos, heavy attacks, the rolling attacks, running attacks, it's pretty much all overhead slams. I guess the only difference is maybe the two-handed heavy attack, which is more of a horizontal and diagonal swipe. Um, as for the Great Hammers, though, their one-handed light attack combo is more horizontal swipes. Their heavy attacks are pretty much all horizontal as well. The two-handed light attacks are once again just overhead slams. And the rolling attack is like more of like a spinning around type of thing, which I don't really like as much because it doesn't come out as quick as the rolling attacks that the great axes do get. Um, as for the power stance combos, they're pretty much exactly the same down to the rolling attack. It's just identical in every which way. But if I was to actually give it to one or the other, I'd probably end up giving it to the great hammers because I just get more variety in terms of just getting more horizontal swipes as well as vertical swipes. Now time to go over the Ash of War options. Starting off with the Great Axes, this is actually everything they get that the Great Hammers do not. So there are only a few, but Spinning Slash, Sword Dance, and Vacuum Slice are very top tier Ash of War options. Sword Dance will probably honestly be my favorite one just to pair with the Great Axe because being able to actually hit very quickly and consecutively with such a larger weapon honestly is pretty funny. I don't know why it actually can't be used on a Great Hammer itself. Kind of unfortunate, but um, yeah, Great Axes definitely benefit in that regard. As for the Great Hammers, yeah, they honestly don't get anything that the Great Axes do not get. Great Axes literally have everything that Great Hammers have, so there's nothing unique that they get at all. Um, as for the options themselves, they're all pretty decent. You get things like Wild Strike still, but you don't really get any like thrusting type Ashes of War. You don't really get any pole arm type Ashes of War like Ice Spear or Spectral Lance. So probably end up giving the Great Hammers a B tier, but the Great Axes probably can get an A tier in terms of the Ash of War options because Spinning Slash, Sword Dance, and Vacuum Slice are very, very good. As for the best PvE options on screen right now is my top 10. The blue is for the Great Hammers, the yellow for the Great Axes. Now, once again, not going to go into too much detail because I have just done my tier list within the last week. So definitely check those videos out, link down below. But judging based on this list, I'd probably end up leaning more towards the Great Hammers. Reason I probably just like them better in general in PvE is because the strike damage that they actually do get is much more beneficial, whereas the Great Axes only really get standard damage, which a lot of enemies just <laughs> tend to be just not that weak to them. But the best options on this list that I have, Envoy's Longhorn, just an absolute boss melting machine. The Great Stars gets a bleed and health regen, so paired with the correct build, especially the Prelich Charge build, just actually performs very, very well. But the best Great Axe options, the Rusted Anko is going to be a very top tier option because it does get piercing damage and very high uh, jumping attack damage with those motion values. Um, the Omen Killer Cleaver is another very solid bleed option, although I just prefer the Great Stars itself. And the Executioner's Great Axe has very good range damage and it actually gets 115 crit ratio as well. But uh, yeah. All in all, I'll probably end up giving it to the Great Hammers for PvE. Now for the best PvP option on screen right now is my top 10. But once again, not going to really go into too much detail because I have my own tier lists. But looking at the list itself, 
probably going to have to go with the Great Hammers again, despite it actually being very, very close. But the reason I probably end up giving it to the Great Hammers is because they actually do have unique type of combos. So if you're going to use something like a Colossal Sword and get a Crouching Attack, if you have a Great Hammer in your offhand or a Curve of Great Sword, you actually get a guaranteed Light Attack after that. So the being that it actually works kind of well with a bunch of different combos, I probably end up giving it to the Great Hammers. But talking about the options themselves, the Pickaxe is actually really good because it does piercing damage and it gets a unique heavy attack where it comes out very, very fast, especially after the recent patch did this actually get buffed. Uh, the Rusted Anchor is going to be your best Great Axe option, another piercing type weapon. Gets very high jumping attack damage, it's very, very solid. The Beast Claw Great Hammer does actually get a guaranteed combo with its heavy attack and light attack combo. And then the Great Stars, once again, a bleed and health regen based weapon. You can actually pair it with a Prelish Charge, but actually it can be pretty funny and, and actually pretty viable in PvP as well. And the Crescent Moon Axe actually does get a very unique heavy attack and with the recent patch, being that the heavy attacks got buffed to the, their speed, this one actually can be pretty decent in roll catching. But uh, yeah, it's very, very close, but I probably actually had to end up leaning towards the Great Hammers. But uh, yeah, that concludes that. Final score is on screen right now. Yes, the Great Hammers did win. They're probably just a little bit better because they just tend to have better options and things like striking damage and just better combos in terms of PvP themselves. But hopefully we actually do get more and unique options in terms of the Great Axes themselves and the DLC. But as always, please do like and subscribe and do follow me on Twitch because I should be live by the time this video is out. And yeah, see you in the next one, guys. Bye.